Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Happy Friday. Um, we are on the way to the ICC in Sydney. We're actually going to our first ever TEDx um, conference. Are you excited, Neil? Can't wait. <laughs> Be really cool. Um, kind of bought tickets a really long time ago. I think I got them for Neil for Christmas. Um, so yeah, we've been kind of, it's kind of been on the back of my mind, so I haven't really thought about it because it was so far away, but today's the day, so super excited about it um, and can't wait. Uh, so I want to try and do a few videos throughout the day um, just to sort of um, give you my feedback and let you know how um, how it goes and how I'm feeling about it all. But yeah, super excited. We're just um, about to park now. Um, so yeah, um, I think registration's first and then we get in at about 8.45 or so. So we've got about half an hour to register. But um, yeah, I'll see you on the flip side. ideas bubbling up in their communities. Today, you are part of a global conversation about our shared future. This is a river delta. It's a beautiful piece of geometry. Now, when we hear the word geometry, most of us think of triangles and circles. But geometry is the mathematics of all shapes. And this meeting of land and sea has created shapes with an undeniable pattern. It has a mathematically recursive structure. Every part of the river delta, with its twists and turns, is a micro version of the greater whole. So I want you to see the mathematics in this. But that's not all. I want you to compare this river delta with this amazing tree. It's a wonder in itself, but focus with me on the similarities between this and the river through which we see the world. I'm interested in healthcare. So we've built, so we've used light field technology to build a device that can image the retina. And it's going to look something like this. We never wanted to be more than just a silhouette. astronauts would do. Like conducting science, making repairs, and eating shelf-stable foods. We didn't see other people for the entire mission. And our world was contained to 130 square meters. Now, to give you an idea, that is roughly how big my room was. We could be more than a future of haste moving us towards a disaster being complete. And we threw out a third of the food we eat. That's more disgusting than the sweat amongst our feet. It's true. You think it's up to the factories, but it's really up to you. So next time you go into the shops, think about all the crops ripped off farmers' plastic bags and those, those who dedicate their lives to the war on waste pursue. Because it's all in people power. When I was making my work suburban in the USA, it was in the shadow of the GFC, which left many homes foreclosed or due for demolition. But when we worked with these homes, we wouldn't just turn up and start painting. We'd work with land banks, community groups, arts organisations, to make sure the projects would be welcome there. To get the homes ready for filming, we spend days restoring the homes. People would tell us stories of the area. They took out for us. 
what you love to do, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, and ideally what the world needs. Everyone according to Japanese culture has an ikigai and finding it requires a, a long and often lengthy search um, of self. The search is important to that cultural belief that discovering one's ikigai brings um, meaning and um, satisfaction. Uh, so we're just off to morning tea now and we will be back um, for the next session. But so busy, it's a full house. Um, and there's apparently 5,000 people here, so it's a bit crazy, but um, yeah, such a great event. Ladies and gentlemen, please so take your... So we are back um, from our break. Um, how did you find session, the first session? Amazing. Love the singer, Odette started it all off. She was so good. Um, the young poet, the, yeah. the 13 She was only 13 boy. years old and just amazing, inspiring words. Homeschooled. So it's for homeschooling. <laughs> um, what else was there? Some great speakers. Eddie Wu, he was great. Did you yeah. like that? Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, really, so really, good. really looking forward. This is session two. So we've, how long is this session? An hour and a half? Uh, yeah. An hour and a half. So more speakers, more performances, more short um, short movies. Short movies. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Short, short films. films. <laughs> so um, yeah, excited. I think it'll be really good. It's um, such a great vibe and energy here. As I said, um, everyone's in just such high spirits, and yeah, it's awesome. It's and very motivating. So um, yeah, I'll keep you posted throughout the day and see you later. Bye. can pick up his children once again and the next Stephen Hawking will have no limitations on his or her ability to not only understand but communicate the secrets of the universe. Is this telepathy? I think it's pretty close. I'll let you guys decide. Thank you. We need to think about housing not as investing in real estate but as investing in community. The good news is there are ways to redesign our deeply unequal housing system. The total value of Australia's housing stock grew to $6.8 trillion in 2017, four times GDP. Sydney's homeless population grew too, by nearly 50% in half a decade. The profit to be made in residential real estate has blinded us to the true value of home and a community where everyone has a decent place to live. Australia has been infected by a global contagion known as the financialisation of housing. The more money to be made on housing, the more we've wanted to invest and the more dependent on property wealth we've become. With houses converted to money-making assets, access to home has become deeply unequal. When you say sorry, mean it. Look people in the eye. Use the framework. Don't be afraid to say sorry because you're too busy looking for the perfect words. And when you say thank you, mean it. 
Look people in the eyes. Don't be afraid to say kind words because life is very hard and people don't hear kind words nearly often enough. And the next time you make a mistake or you need to thank someone for something, don't be afraid to be vulnerable and authentic because the power of any message is how honest the place it starts its journey. I just want you to know that I do not feel nothing when I say I've got to go and leave you this way you'll find the love to blame brains to process it, the more likely we are to believe it's true, even when it's not. We're also subject to confirmation bias and motivated reasoning. These are our tendencies to seek out the evidence that support our existing views and question or reinterpret or reject the evidence to the contrary. That was a poem called, Some Sounds Cannot Be Written Down. <laughs> um, so we're just breaking up for lunch, um, but before we go, we just thought we'd quickly um, have a rundown of, of how the sessions have been so far. So Neil, what did you think of that? Yeah, it was great. There was talk from a neurologist about um, implanting a almost a computer in your brain. So it's a more enhanced technology than what Stephen Hawking uses, which was very, very used. cool. Used. Yes, correct. Um, there were some great performers as well. Yeah. Um, and obviously the woman talking about housing. Yeah, so there was a woman um, who was talking about housing in Australia and how the houses, there's a housing crisis, obviously, as we all know, living in Sydney. Um, but yeah, just some um, strategies and some um, just giving her opinion on ways that we can overcome that. This is really interesting because obviously that's our industry and that's our field. So it was it was good to hear that, wasn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. really good. Uh, uh, from a business point of view and even from a personal point of view as well. Yeah. Those are really good hints and tips and yeah. just inside Definitely. knowledge. Definitely. So um, there will probably be in the video, um, so you'll get a bit of that. Um, but yeah, we're just going to head off to lunch now, and then yeah, we'll um, I'll take some more footage when we come back in. But um, I'll see you then. I'll just give you a quick show of where we're sitting. Um, so it's pretty awesome. You can really get a gauge of how many people are here. As I said, there's 5,000 people here. So, so, so cool. Um, wow, there are a lot of people here. <laughs> Lots of smells to sniff. Um, well, my name is David Capra, and this is my seven-year-old Dashaun, Tina. And Tina was quite overwhelmed at the prospect of speaking today and asked me to say a few words on her behalf. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you ready?
is the last session, so we've just had afternoon tea and just check out the seats that we got now. We are so, so close. Um, so I'm getting a little bit tired. I've had um, lots of caffeine today, which is quite unusual for me because I've been caffeine free for the past sort of two, three months. Um, so I'm tired, but I'm wired as well. <laughs> as well. Um, it's been really awesome. There's been some fantastic performances really um, motivational and inspiring speakers. Um, it's exceeded my expectations today and it's just been absolutely amazing and I've loved everything about it. Um, I'll definitely come back next year and every year afterwards. Um, so yeah, this is the last bit. So this is session for the last bit. So I think there's an hour and a half and then it's home time. Sad face, I've had such a good time. Um, but yeah, I'll take some more footage as the day ends. Um, and yeah, I hope you've been enjoying it as much as I have. For those unfamiliar with what I do, I guess if you distilled it right down to its essence, uh, you would call me a beatboxer. Go for example. Yeah, here's a sample. I also want to talk to you about millennials. Not because I'm an expert, but because I was given a gift from millennials that taught me a lot about why my age doesn't really matter. You see, I was the oldest guy at Facebook. I worked for the most millennial company on earth during the most dynamic period in its history. And I was about as far from millennial as you could get. When I joined Facebook to help set up the Australia and New Zealand business, the average Facebook employee was 25 years old, and CEO Mark Zuckerberg was 27. I was 47. Not old in most people's language, but a grandfather in Facebook years. And to my knowledge, the oldest person the company had ever hired. When you think of firefighters, who do you picture? The only white male, perhaps? Hot, sexy Mr. November on the firefighter's calendar? <laughs> well, considering that 95% of all urban firefighters in Australia are white men, it's not surprising. And whilst I have the utmost respect for the men in our fire service, this image that we have in our heads it needs to be It's all right, I'm wearing my lucky undies. The same ones, the same ones I wore on the day we won the years vote. So, courage, the ability to overcome fear and risk one's personal safety or sometimes even one's life is recognised as one of humankind's greatest virtues. We certainly appreciate its usefulness. We are a fragile species and we face many threats. So that was it. Neil. It was amazing. It one was of the best so things good. I've actually ever been to. We're actually booking in for next year. We're coming back every year. That was um, above and beyond my expectations. I thought it was brilliantly done. Um, I just don't know what to say about it. I, just, I feel inspired. I feel motivated. I want to go home and just like write some stuff down because I'm truly, truly inspired. Um, but yeah, so Vivid's on at the moment, so it's a bit crazy in the city. Um, beautiful lights. Um, but yeah, I've had like such a great day. Please make sure that you like this video and subscribe. 
and please. also comment. Oh, and comment as well. 